Welcome to this episode of Living on the Edge with your host, Ross and Nate Moyer. Well, welcome to Living on the Edge. It's my pleasure to be with you t- this evening. My name is Patty Wallace, and I'm filling in for Dr. Russ Moyer. Dr. Russ is getting ready to head to Columbia with Pastor Miguel Simon, so please keep them in your prayers. I know it's going to be an awesome time as they go down living on the edge as they travel to South America, but it's so wonderful to be with you tonight, and I just want to share a little bit from my heart of what God has been speaking to me for this season. I want you to know that God has mighty exploits for you. And when we're talking about living on the edge, what does that mean? Hearing the voice of the Lord and knowing what he has for you right now in this season. And I want you to know that the spirit of God in you is alive and active. And as you go, wherever you go, you truly are a releaser of life. And so I just want to share with you today, how can we hear and how can we know the plan and destiny that God has for us to be that light shining in the darkness? And I want to share with you for a few moments, just a a little bit out of the book of Nehemiah. God has really put this on my heart lately. You know, the word says that we can do mighty exploits for God. And when we're talking about hearing the voice of the Lord, Nehemiah, I get so inspired every time I read the book of Nehemiah. It it so resonates with me. He was just a normal servant of the king. I want to ask you, are you a servant of the king? Just going about your daily business. But he heard the state of the city of Jerusalem. News reached his ears about his, his home city. And I want to ask you, where do you live? What city, what region are you in? Because God wants to speak to you about your city. God wants to speak to you about the place where he has called you. Maybe it's not the city that you live in right now, but it's the the city or the region that you're called to. I want to tell you that God has in the heart of every man, every woman, every child filled with the spirit of God to make an impact where he has you. And so it's so inspiring, the story of Nehemiah, just a normal guy serving the king, bearing the cup. And he heard that the city of Jerusalem was burned down, was being destroyed, was in a state of ruins. And this is what he said. He said, my God put it in my heart. And I am in chapter 2 of Nehemiah. When he, he went and he arose to the city, he said, My God had put it in my heart to do at Jerusalem. And I want to ask you, what has God put in your heart? Are you listening? That you would know what he has put in your heart to do where you are. Because I'm telling you, he has a mission He has a strategy for those things that have been torn down and destroyed in the region that you're in. In January, the Lord spoke to me and he said, get on Twitter. And I thought, I don't need to be on the computer one more minute. But I went on Twitter and then the Lord began to show me, uh, sign up for the city of Hamilton police on Twitter, sign up for the mayor. Sign up for your city councilor on Twitter. And I began to hear what was going on in my city. And guess what happened? Just through a vehicle like Twitter, when I heard the news, when I saw what was happening in my city, the Lord began to download so much more of a heart for my city. And I want to tell you that he has even put in you a seed of something that needs to be brought forth in faith and works in your city and in your region, just like in Nehemiah, that call. And so I began to learn more and more about my city and get get more of a heart for my city. And I'll never forget the day that a man of God uh, came around me and he said, would you die for your city? And I thought, wow, I don't, I don't think I would. 
I didn't have that heart seed, that heart that was really burning with passion for the place where God had put me. So I began to cry out for that. Lord, would you give me a heart for my city to make an impact, to make a difference? And so I want to say to you that you, as you begin to cry out and as you begin to hear the, what's going on around about you, God can deposit a heart that is his heart, his heart for the region that you're in. And you know, when Nehemiah went to Jerusalem, he saw, he said, the city lay in waste. The gates were broken down. They were burned with fire. And it says that he saw that, but he went around and he began to mobilize people. And it says they strengthened their hands for the work. But you know, as they were working, they weren't just working, they were praying. And this is the strategic time and season that God wants to be mobilizing his people for prayer and for work, because this is how we're gonna impact our cities. This is how we're gonna impact even those things. When we begin to hear, when we get on Twitter, or when we watch the news, or when we hear the news of what's happening in our city, don't be down and discouraged, but get inside of you the faith that Nehemiah had, that he said, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I'm going to make a difference. Because see, God has a mandate for us. I want to ask you, what is God's mandate for you? What does he put upon your heart? What are you passionate about? When you see the needs around about you in your city or region, what really gets your heart? You say, I want to do something about that. If there's nothing that that stirs within you, then begin to cry out to the Lord because you need to have his heart. I'll tell you, oftentimes, the, the, the place where he's called you to make a difference has something to do with your testimony. What has he done for you? How has he come and released his power in your life? I'm telling you, he wants to do the same thing in and through you for someone else and not just for a person but for a city you know Jesus talked about cities Jesus talked about cities in Matthew 11 it says he began to denounce the cities he said all these great miracles had happened in Capernaum and all of these places but this the cities did not repent and when the Lord was speaking to those cities he spoke actually to the city when he was speaking to them he said it's going to be better for Sodom than for you I'm, I want to ask you is that what you want the Lord to be speaking over your city or can you get a heart to be mobilized can you get a heart to be activated that you would make a difference even with those around you that that you can partner with because see it doesn't take anyone necessarily that has a lot of money. It doesn't take anyone necessarily that that uh, you know maybe is is trained in a high position. He was the cupbearer, but God put a vision in his heart. And then when he went, he went in the authority of the Lord Nehemiah, and he was able to mobilize and use the kingdom authority that God had given them. So. <clears throat> When Jesus spoke to those cities, he was saying that they did not repent. This shows us a key. We can begin to repent on behalf of our cities. We can begin to cry out. We can begin to call on the name of the Lord. When you see those things on Twitter or on Facebook or on the news, ask the Lord to begin to mobilize you to cry out on behalf of your city. Because when you take that place of standing in the gap, guess what? You're the watchman on the wall for Hamilton, or you're the watchman on the wall for Ottawa, or you are the watchman on the wall for whatever city or region that he's called you to. And I tell you, when you come into an area and you begin to serve the Lord in that area and you lay your heart open and you say, Lord, I, I want to serve you in this area. He will give you a burden that is right from the Spirit of God, both to pray and to do. I'll never forget my first mission trip when I was a, uh, in college, a young person full of passion. 
I went and I joined a, a team of, of on fire college students and I'm telling you, these guys knew how to pray and they were on fire. And we do, would just begin to cry out to the Lord. And I, it was my first mission trip in New York City. I was from the country, didn't know anything about the city, and I was in a very scary place. All kinds of drug use and murders you were hearing about. And uh, I was a, a young, frightened girl in a big city, but I was with an awesome team who knew their God. And we began to cry out and pray and we would go and we would be a part of acts that the church was doing all over the city, in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, in uh, um, Astoria where I was, in Queens. And th something happened. When I began to serve in that city, sharing my testimony, praying for prostitutes, sitting down with a homeless man that, that had been beaten by the police and was in a very difficult place of being addicted, but who didn't even believe in Jesus was, was a Muslim. And I began to get such a heart. I began to weep with the people and pray with the people. But do you know what happened? The burden of the Lord was transferred onto my heart. This wasn't my city. I hadn't grown up there. I hadn't lived there, but I held this city in my heart. And after the mission trip was over, it was about six weeks, I remember going back to college, and it was in the fall now, after the summer, and I remember going to the mall, and I, I went into the wall, I began to weep, and I, the Spirit of God came upon me because I was crying out for New York. See, something happened in that time and that place where I went and I served. The burden of the Lord came upon my heart. And I remember walking in that mall and I wasn't seeing the stores. I wasn't seeing the people. I was seeing New York City that was upon my heart. And I was interceding even as I was walking. And it was the burden of the Lord. And I want to tell you, God is looking and he's asking, will someone somewhere be willing to open their heart and receive the burden of the Lord? for this city and this city and this city, because it's only as my people are mobilized, it's only as my people, my body, go and do even the works that I did and greater works that those places are gonna be touched. So I want you to know that there's anointing that comes from God to pray and to work for your city or that region, or maybe it's a neighborhood Maybe right now you don't have the city in your heart, but it's that business or that place of work. I'm telling you, as you begin to walk in that building and you say, you know what? I'm not going to be a discontented Christian in this workplace. I'm going to be a Christian that's on fire. I'm going to be a Christian that's going to pray for my workmates. I'm going to be a Christian that's going to maybe go on prayer walks over my lunch or maybe network with other believers so that we can believe that God would be released in this place. I'm telling you, there's somewhere where God wants to download his heart for that place. And he wants you to know that you are on divine assignment. You're on divine assignment. And places are important to God. You know, in the in Revelation, I was speaking about how Jesus was speaking to the cities in Matthew. In Revelation, it says the Spirit of God began to speak to the churches in the city. And remember when he was speaking to all of these churches and Jesus was walking among the lampstands? I want to ask you, if Jesus walked physically among the churches today, what would he see? What kind of heart would he see? Would they have a heart for their neighborhoods? Would they have a heart for their cities? Would they have a heart for the social issues? Would they have a heart for businesses? Would they have a heart for the schools? See, the Lord is looking for churches that have a heart for where he has put them both corporately and for you as an individual, whether it's your business, your workplace. And you know, when the Holy Spirit was speaking to those churches in Revelation, these are some of the things that he said. 
He said, you've tolerated Jezebel and idolatry. He said, you've forgotten your first love. He said, you're lukewarm. He said, you have the reputation of being alive, but you're dead. And I don't know about you, but there are many instances where I look at what Jesus said to all of those churches, and I can see myself there. I can see where I've lost passion. I can see where I have dead works. And see, as we in the church see, start here, and we call out in repentance, and we ask the Lord to come in a way that we would be overcomers. I'm telling you, as he begins to move, he's going to move us. And this is what the Holy Spirit said to each and every church again and again. He said, I know your works. I know your works. See, God is calling us to something mighty in prayer. And he's calling us to something mighty in work. Just like in Nehemiah. They had prayer and they had work. And so the Lord knows our works. But I'm telling you, when, when he comes with that faith upon us to know that by the Spirit of God, where he's put us and how he's put us, we can overcome and make that difference. We can overcome and be mobilized by the Spirit of God. And <clears throat> Revelation 3.19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And you know, that's what the Lord is really saying to the church right now. He goes, I love you, his heart for the church. But I'm calling you to a higher place. That those places where we've grown complacent and we don't care and we don't love and we don't have the burden of the Lord and we're not impassioned for where he's put us in our cities or in our workplace or in our neighborhood. You know, his heart breaks when he walks along the city streets. But when he's inside of us and we walk along our city streets or at work or in our neighborhood, are our hearts breaking? I'm asking you, would you cry out and say, Lord, we want to move to that next level of really having that fresh fire and that first love back both for you and the things that you love and I'm telling you that as we begin to get that heart and that burden for the Lord the assignment is coming and I want to speak that to you right now some of you that are watching me your assignment is coming you know right after that passage in Revelation the Lord says behold I stand at your door and I knock I want to come in and sup with you I want to tell you that the Lord has a place of sweet fellowship for you and that in that place of sweet fellowship in that place where where you're unloading the burdens on your heart he's going to unload the burdens on his heart do you want to hear the heart of the Lord do you want to have your ear on his breastplate on his on his breast and really hear what he's saying as you come into that place with sweet fellowship, I'm telling you, and grow in greater intimacy, the Lord is going to begin to download his heart for the things that are upon his heart, for the people, for the cities, for the schools, for the social issues, in the places where he's crying out for someone to cry out for justice, for the unborn, in the places where even in our government, he's looking for a voice. I want to tell you, he meets us in that place of intimacy. And he downloads his heart there. But he's not calling us to just sup with him there. He's calling us into a place of out and about. Where he can walk with us in power. And use us to inspire by faith and by works those that are around us I'm telling you God likes to use everyday people and sometimes it's not something great and mighty a great scheme or a great plan that costs a lot of money maybe it's just reaching out it's offering to help it's saying I'm gonna pick up some garbage around my city 
or I'm going to pray for my city counselor, or maybe my church, that neighborhood that I'm in, has a particular need. I'm going to mobilize not just myself, but those in my church to meet that need. Maybe it's in your workplace, God downloads an idea. Maybe you can disciple another new believer. Or maybe he's called you to be a prayer rallier. I'm telling you, this is a time like no other that we need to be praying. For those of you who are watching and you live in Canada, you know that this is a season and an hour that's an urgent time before our election. I want to encourage you, be a Nehemiah. Stand upon the wall during this season. Get upon the wall and begin to cry out in repentance for our nation, that we would have righteous candidates that we would elect, that they would, the hearts of the people would turn and elect those who stand for righteousness. This is a time like no other. I want to tell you that so goes the church, so goes the city. If we would hear that cry of 2 Chronicles 7.14, if we would hear that cry that we would call out, that we would call out in repentance, that we would turn from our wicked ways, then God says he would heal our land. You know, you have a divine assignment, just like Nehemiah had. I believe it. And somewhere he's asking you to stand upon the wall. He's asking you to stand upon the wall in prayer. And he's asking you to be mobilized and be called to action. And I want to go a step beyond that. He's actually asking you to mobilize others, even as not Nehemiah did. He was a cupbearer that went from a place of service to a place of of leadership and mobilization. Many of you out there, you've been serving and you've been serving and you've been serving. And the Lord says, this is the time that you're even going to be motivating and inspiring others to serve outside of the walls of the church. So I want to ask you today, are you really willing to receive the burden of the Lord? Are you willing to lend your ear and listen for his strategy because he has a strategy he has a strategy for every city he has a strategy for every social problem he has a strategy in the heart of god that those would come to salvation and not only would they come to salvation but that their land would be healed and so I want to challenge you, even in this next season, as we're here in Canada, we're coming up to the election October 19th. We have a few short weeks left. First, can you mobilize yourself? What is God asking you to do in these few short weeks before the election? Can you pray? Can you volunteer for righteous candidates? Can you stand on the wall in that way? Secondly, how can you inspire and motivate others in this short time in this season? Can you mobilize them to pray? Can you mobilize them to fast? Can you mobilize them to get out and vote and really use their voice to make a difference? And thirdly, in the days that are coming, where are you called? It might be more than one place. Maybe you work in a specific city or maybe you live in a specific city, but God has a mandate. I'm sure of it. He has a mandate for you, and he has a calling for you that has a location to it. Do you remember when he was talking to the disciples? He said, I want you to go out, Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. I'm telling you, we're in the times of the uttermost parts. That means we need to be on divine assignment. So ask the Lord, Lord, what's my assignment for this season? Where are you calling me to? And once he speaks to your heart, then 
Lord, what's your strategy? What's your strategy in prayer? What's your strategy in action? What's your strategy in mobilizing? I'm telling you, oftentimes we get involved in, in many things inside the doors of the four walls of the church. And I want to tell you that's good. We need to be involved inside the four walls of the church. But don't stop there. That's a starting point. That's a launching point. That is the place where you're being empowered and equipped and mobilized to go outside of the four walls of the church and impact your region, impact your neighborhood. So ask the Lord, live on that prophetic edge. Where are you calling me to? What's the prayer strategy? What's the strategy of action? Remember in Revelation when Jesus was talking to the church, he said, I know your works. I know your deeds. If I were to talk to you today and I'd say, what are your works in your neighborhood? Or what are your works in your business? What are your works at work? What are your works in your city? What are your works in your region? Is there something you could say to me? Yeah, the Lord's been putting this on my heart. This is what we're doing. This is how we're mobilizing. If not, then go back to the Lord and say, Lord, we repent. We haven't really been doing your works in this place, in this region, in this area. Lord, we haven't really been standing in the gap. We haven't really been praying. We haven't been that which you needed to be in place to release the spirit of God where you've called us. Lord, we repent. And we want to come back to that place of really being mobilized to do what you called us to do, to go to the uttermost. I'm telling you, you're called. You're called to a place and you're called for a purpose and you're called to do greater works and release the love of Christ in real ways. So I wanna thank you for being with us today. I, I wanna say, I believe God has great things for you in this coming season. Take some time to put your head up on his chest and get the strategies of God. And I also want to invite you, if you were stirred by this program and you'd like additional mentoring or schooling, we have Spirit Ministries Training Center. You could do part-time classes or online classes or full-time, or you can get involved with the Elisha Project for greater mentoring to, to help you fulfill your destiny and purpose to release the power of Christ in the earth. And you can find out about that by calling our office number 905-308-9991 and we also want to invite you to celebrate with us eagle worldwide ministries is celebrating 15 years this october so if you'd like to come and participate with us at our gala we're going to be having an awesome formal gala that's a fundraiser for the kingdom performing arts and events center and it's one way that we want to shine the light of Christ and uh, coming alongside of young performers and bringing the Bible to life and giving people an opportunity to perform that are really going to shine the light of Christ in that realm of media. So you can get your tickets by calling our office 905-308-9991. We're going to have a Christian comedian with us. His name is Darren Streblo and uh, an awesome comedian. And we just love for you to come and support this fundraising event. And I just want to tell you that you were called for such a time as this. So I pray that you would live on the edge, live on that prophetic edge, empowered by the Spirit of God, and that you would do the works of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. So God bless you, and thank you so much for being with us. And I know that God has greater works for you to do. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of Living on the Edge. Eagle Worldwide Ministries offers a variety of resources to strengthen the body of Christ. For more information, check our website at www.eagleworldwide.com or call us at 905-308-9991. God bless.